For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. There is life after death. The wages of death, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Death is coming. I'm looking for a particular verse here in the book of Acts. I probably won't find it. For God so loved the world. We speak about the love of God. The love of God is preached. But, when you read John 3.16, the love of God is past tense. Which means the love of God was at a period of time. And that period of time is brought forth on your reactions to what you do with Calvary. Your actions of God's love continues when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Now if God so loved the world that He loved you that He gave His only begotten Son and you choose to reject His Son, you choose to reject what God has done for you, do not expect the love of God in your life. And when we continue in John chapter 3, for those, for you who choose to reject what God has done, there is no love. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. God is not willing to throw you into hell, that bad word. But that bad word called hell is your choice upon your
in the book of Acts, the Bible says that there's no other name given amongst men whereby ye must be saved. You have to believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. Now, you cannot believe Jesus Christ that is not God. That's religion. You cannot believe in the Lord Jesus Christ's mother. That's religion. You've got to believe in the only begotten Son of God. You've got to make sure you have the right Jesus, because Paul tells us to the Corinthian church, there's another Jesus out there. Now, you can believe in Trump, you can believe in Cruz, but these guys, Hillary, cannot save your soul. There is one name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Christians, why aren't you out here spreading that one name instead of these other names? That name is a name that I am not afraid of. I am not ashamed of His gospel. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. And God said, if you do not believe on Him, you are already condemned. You're not going to hell. You're already there. You need to come to the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on Him to be saved. To be saved from what? Going to hell. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Please stop yelling at people. God loves people. He doesn't yell. He never went to anybody um, to blast Have you read the Gospels where he, where he read and all the people heard him? Do you know how Moses, all the children of Israel heard him? That's the Old him? Testament. We're in the New Testament. Yeah. The New Testament but Jesus spoke to all the multitude. He spoke to 4,000 people. Yes, he did, but he, he didn't had to do it with a voice. He didn't tell them We're not yelling. Hell. We're not yelling. Uh, yes, he did. He did. No, he didn't. He, he don't know your Bible. No, he doesn't know his Bible. Because Jesus spoke more about hell than he yes. did about heaven. In the Bible. He also fed the hungry and he did everything else. Are you feeding the hungry right now? Yes, we are. Where? With the word. What are you doing? Have you we support missionaries. We su How many missionaries do you support? Let's see. 21 nations over the world. You, personally. Not me. No, there you go. I support the church. I give my money yeah. to the church and they do. And they give them food they don't give them the gospel. We do that too. You condemned already by not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not commanded to feed the people. It's going to the world and preach the gospel. We love them. We love them. That's why we're out here. We're not. Auditivity of voice is that so all can hear. That's all I'm going to say. We're here for you all to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You got motorcycles all around that we can hear miles away, but you don't eject to them. But when you preach Jesus, when you read Isaiah 53, he's rejected and despised of men. You made the Bible true. And if that is true, and the Bible despised Jesus as you, the Bible says you will do and you have, the Bible also said that there's a devil's hell. You are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. Now, I'm not talking about adultery. I ain't talking about murder. I ain't talking about stealing. You are a sinner in general. For all have sinned. There is no degree of sin, all sin. The Bible says, Behold the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. A condition that you have that is terminal today is you are a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and if you fail to believe, back to John chapter 3, He that believes on Him is not condemned. There is no condemnation to those that have believed on the gospel. You are a child of God by the Holy Spirit and by the finished work of 
Jesus Christ. Not of works, least any man can boast. There is nothing you can do that Jesus has already done for to be your entrance into heaven. But he that believeth not, he that but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. People, I'm reading right out of the Bible. How can Christians walk by and say, oh, you can't preach that? I am reading out of John chapter 3 of the King James Bible. I am reading to you the words of Christ in red. But he never said anything about heaven.
if you were to die, which you will, America will not be in your thoughts anymore. If you die in Christ, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. That's believing on Jesus Christ. If you're to reject the Lord Jesus Christ, you will go to a place of torment. Being tormented. And being tormenting, said Jesus, about Lazarus and the rich man that went to hell. Where Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom of peace of God. Rejecting God's offer is no peace. There is no love. There is no joy. There is no patience. Those things are the fruit of the Spirit, and you do not get them by rejecting God's offer. Rejecting what God has done for you, you turn to the enemy, to Satan, and you'll get everything he gets. Damnation, loss, abandonment, darkness. You may think, oh, I'm not bad enough to follow Satan. It's not whether you're bad enough, it's what you've done with Jesus. It relies on the very name of God, the very salvation that God has wrought in His Son for you, His creation. What must you do to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. The ultimate, the ultimate health care is offered by God when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll suffer no pain, no sorrow. Your tears will wipe away in New Jerusalem, in the eternity. When you dwell with the one that died for you upon Calvary, that left that tomb, that is seated at the right hand of the Father right now, that God, that salvation will be offered to you, and if you trust to believe in it, your life will be secure, you will not perish, you will be given a new body that will never suffer, that will never weep, and no president candidate can give you that today, or tomorrow, or ever has. And... It's all free. God's salvation doesn't cost nothing but repentance. Admitting that you are a sinner. Breaking the pride and becoming to God humbly. That's the cost. Religion cannot do it. Again, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Love is action. There are three kinds of love. One love, hey baby, come on, let's go. If you love me, you'll do this for me. That's a fleshy, that's a whatever I can get kind of love. And that don't last. There's a love that, okay, we'll stick it out through and through until you do me wrong or I get tired of you and then we'll just break it off and go our own separate ways. That's a love. But it's not the kind of love that you want to base your hopes upon. But there's a love that's a sacrifice where the one that loves you takes of himself and gives to you. He provides for you. He cares for you. He does things for you. For God so loved the world that He gave. 
Did he just ask you to come to his son and believe on the only name that can save you, the Lord Jesus Christ? That relationship that God wants from you has been completed and finished in the very work of the Lord Jesus Christ. You just got to come to Him and believe on Him to be saved. God says, let us come together. The Bible says over and over, God's not willing. God wants to meet with you, sinner. God does not want to pass judgment upon you. When God does do a judgment, He sends His prophets. He sends warnings. He does not want. He puts yield signs out for you. He puts stop signs out for you. He does not want you to go the way of judgment and hell and Satan. We are a stop sign. We are a yield sign. We are a bridge out sign to you right now today that you need to stop in your tracks and realize in your life, are you believing in Jesus Christ or something else or nothing? And if your answer is not Jesus Christ, there is nothing... You have no hope outside of Jesus Christ. You are hopeless. You may think, but God doesn't care what you think. God doesn't care what you believe. God resolved all that in His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, upon Calvary's cross in the empty tomb. Calvary's cross and the empty tomb gets away of what your pea brain thinks and what you believe. It's what God says. And God said, I so loved you that I gave my only begotten Son. Now, if God loves you, and He does, and He gave His Son, that's what you need. When God said, I sent my Son because I love you, that's what you need. But you go about your way and go about your wants. And God doesn't care what you want. God cares about your need. Your need is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because God said, I love you and I gave you my son. He didn't say, for God so loved the world, he gave you the church. The church has nothing to do with salvation. He didn't say, for God so loved the world, he gave you Mary. That's not an equation. He didn't say, for God so loved the world, just go about your way, keep on doing what you're doing, that's fine and good. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the need that God, the Creator, the God that knows everything, says that you need. Now, looking for another passage here. The wind stops blowing. There's the pages start turning out, turn. Now, God said in John 3.16, Whosoever believe in Him should not perish. We see these signs of these men that are running for office. There is only one name that God has given to you that whereby you must be saved. That's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, God said in John 3.16, Whosoever... God has given you, all of you, 
a general name. He is giving you the name of whosoever. Your name is no more John, it's no more Joe, it's no more Mary, Kathy, whatever your name is. Your name is whosoever. And the first thing that God wants you to do, Mr. or Mrs. Whosoever, He wants you to believe on His Son for salvation that you perish not. Now, whosoever, if you do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and I lost my page. In Revelation chapter 20, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever. We got a whosoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ shall, perish, shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. And here we have a whosoever that was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. There is no whosoever will go to purgatory. There is a whosoever that doesn't believe in God. There's a whosoever that believeth in the Lord Jesus Christ shall have everlasting life. Or there's a whosoever that chooses not to believe the Lord Jesus Christ will be cast into the lake of fire. That last part is in the book of Revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus told John to write in Jesus' book his revelation, not John, you get it wrong when you go to a wrong church. The revelation of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, told John to write that I will cast people into hell if they choose to reject me and have their name put in the Lamb's Book of Life. The same writer of the Gospel of John where Jesus is speaking, tells you to be a whosoever to believe and to get by the gospel that Christ died for your sins. He was buried according to the scriptures and arose again according to the scriptures to obtain eternal life that will never perish. You are a fallen creature. You are a sinner. The wages of sin is death. You will die. But, the gift of God, you don't pay for gifts. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. You're going to die one day, and we don't know when, but your eternal destination lies what you do with Christ before you die. If you're a whosoever that believeth, you get everlasting life. If you're a whosoever that rejected, you will be placed by Jesus Christ into the lake of fire, which burdens for all eternity. Salvation has been wrought by one. The one that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now that's some serious business. When God steps out and says, you better believe me rather than anything. God said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. That's God speaking. And when you go about to do your way, your lies, you will not get life. You'll get condemnation. You'll get damnation. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. I read to you out of the King James 1611 Bible. These words are not my words. 
A guy came by with a preacher's words. They're not found in the Bible. We get to you the words of life. We told by God in Mark 16 to go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. God's telling you to believe on Him. And Him alone.